Um, I mean, it's pretty good for a team to be down 0-3. Um, everybody seems on our beat. Uh, seem optimistic about our chances, so uh, that's good to see. Do you think it's a vocal thing or an individual thing? Is someone speaking out, or is it just individually guys who just know it's, it's going uh, I think I think individually we got a pretty good uh, a mindset as a team. Um, as far as individuals, we got a we got a. Everybody's been in tough situations. Everybody understands what's at risk and you know what stage we're on. So uh, to see everybody coming in, communicating, um, smiles, jokes, a little bit uh, is great. It's great to see. Swish, what's the biggest thing when it comes to surviving something like this that's never been done before? Uh, I'll take it one quarter at a time. I mean, a lot of people say one game at a time, but you literally got to take it a quarter at a time. Uh, you got to try and slow them down the first quarter and the second quarter. And obviously, they're a big third quarter team. So, as long as we take it one quarter at a time, we should be all right. How do you mentally approach <clears throat> game four to keep this series alive? Um, I mean, just know that our backs up against the wall and if we don't win, I mean, it's over. So, I mean, if that's not a, enough motivation for you, I don't know what it is. Uh, it's just the finals, and uh, we just got to come out and play the way we know how. Yeah, rough finish for last night, but do, is there anything that you review after you review this morning you can take sort of positively away from the way you guys performed last night? Uh, I mean, we played well defensively on, on uh, Clay and Steph, made them take tough shots. Um, they didn't particularly shoot the ball well until Steph hit that one shot in fourth. Um, it was pretty big. Um, I mean, that was great, but we got to figure out a way to guard KD. So um, there's a lot of positives I think we could take from that game. What do you think was the difference, especially on Steph coming off of that historic game and then into into Cleveland? Um, I think our uh, how how aggressive we were with him more than anything. Um, on our switches, we got into the ball. The bigs did a great job when we switched and blitzed. So um, if we can if we can keep him to the numbers that he shot yesterday, then uh, we we give ourselves a great chance. Ron said that the Warriors are like. Comparable to like the Patriots, um, no room for error when it comes to them. When you think about the errors or the turnovers in this last game, do you think it was more mindfulness or just uh, their defensive activity? Um, a little bit of both. Um, we had a few turnovers where, uh, I mean, Katie was just so long and, and long arms and tall. Uh, he just pretty much snagged one out of the air in the corner. I think Brown was trying to pass to Kev or somebody like that. And uh, I mean, I took a few bad shots. I could have been. Turnovers, so I mean, it could go either way. Everybody's trying to make the right play, playing hard. So I mean, we can't we can't dwell on that part. I mean, they're they're a great team. They're probably one of the best defensive teams in the league, and uh, they're going to make you make mistakes. It's just a matter of how many you make. Speaking of that, dwelling on it, short term memory for you in this series. I mean, what did you learn, especially coming out of Game One, and then to have a game like you did this last time? Um, I mean, I just I just live by a short mindset. Regardless, uh, if I play well. Um, Night's over, get to the next one. Uh, so whether I play bad, night's over, get to the next one. You know, it's uh, pretty much the way I, I've lived my life, my whole life. So, I mean, I've had a lot of bad days, a lot of bad days, so I know how to get over them. Jerry, you mentioned the physicality, the sort of attacking with the switching, the, uh, the success you had early in the game and with Steph and Clay. Um, in the second half, though, that turns into a lot of runs at the basket, you know, yeah. 30 points in the paint. They shoot 60% from the field. How do you wind up keeping that up for 48 minutes as opposed to 28 minutes? Um, I mean, when, well, when, you, when, you, when you're doing as much running and trying to communicate as much as you can, uh, you get gassed. And we got to, in that third, fourth quarter, we can't we can't let that happen. A few mishaps, um, a few of them were my fault. I can't even say, sit there and, you know, say, this guy did that, this guy did that. So, um, so. It, our communication has to be key. Um, it has to be loud, early, and continuous. Uh, Forty-eight minutes. You guys want this season to be over, but what do you know about LeBron in particular as a competitor in elimination games? I mean, he's. I've, I mean, he's Bron. I mean, he's he's going to come out and be aggressive and play well. Uh, that's what we anticipate. But we got to. We as a supporting cast got to go out there and play well. We got to have that same mindset. He's he's bringing to the court. Are you relieved no one tweeted Cavs and seven from your account last night? Say again. Are you relieved no one tweeted Cavs and seven from your account last night? No, I was about to do it myself, but I just thought, probably decided this probably wasn't the best time to do it. <laughs> Jay, there's more sense of um, I don't want to say no pressure tomorrow, but can you come out a little bit more? You know, we got nothing to lose attitude. Um. Yeah, I mean. Playing against this team, that's the attitude you got to have, regardless of if it's game one or game four or whatever closeout game it is. 
you got to have that mindset. Uh, so, I mean, there, there are teams that you can't play with the lead with and try to coast. You got to keep attacking them uh, the whole game. So, we got to have that mindset for sure. And uh, it's going to be what it's going to be when that clock is 0 0. Just got to leave it all out there. Trends like yourself uh, draw on what you guys accomplished uh, last year in game four and the way that you came out and, and basically trucked. Um, I mean, there's so much going around with this team. With what we did in the past, what we did in the past, we're not that team anymore. We're not that team from last year. We're not a team from two years ago. We ain't a team from three years ago. So, shit, we ain't got the same, same team from six months ago. So, uh, we gotta, we gotta come out with this core, with the guys we got, and uh, go out there and put, put something together. Last night, LeBron and, and, and Kevin talked about the, the slim margin of error that you have to play with when playing against this Golden State team. How mentally taxing is that for you as a player, knowing that just you know one turnover, one missed rebound, one missed shot could just lead to an, an avalanche of scoring uh, from that? Um, I mean, I try not to dwell on it too much, um, honestly. You start thinking too much, you try to try to play perfect basketball, and, get, and basketball ain't perfect. Um, they make it look like that because they got the players they have, but basketball is not a perfect game. So we, whether you dwell on mistakes, um, trying not to make mistakes is going to happen regardless. It's, that's just the way we play. Um, so I don't really – you try to limit as many as you can, but at the same time, you got to play. I mean, it's not really – there's no secret to, to beating this team. You just got to keep playing, moving the ball, whether you turn the ball over. So what, get back on defense and try and get a stop. JR, how demoralizing is a game like last night where – you guys have the lead, you shut down play, you shut down staff, and then Kevin goes off for 43. Um, demoralizing? I don't think it's demoralizing. It's a lot of a lot of other things in this world going on worse than losing a game three at home. Um, is, is, does it hurt? Absolutely. But, I mean, Kevin Durant is a great player. Everybody knows that. Probably one of the best offensive players to play this game. They got two of the best shooters to ever play this game. So. We got to understand that they're going to make shots, they're going to miss shots, so we just got to stay even keel, keep a level head, and no matter what happens, uh, as long as we give it our all, play for one another, we should be we should be all right with that. I mean, if you didn't need a sense of urgency to play in the finals, I don't know why you're playing. I mean, whether you down, are you down 0-3 or you up 3-0, it don't matter. Uh, to have a sense of urgency in the finals to – be able to try and find that is, uh, is kind of ridiculous. Derek got here late, so apologies if you answered this. Um, so much conversation is about the Warriors and their offense, but what is it that makes their defense unique? Um, they talk. They got uh, they got guys who are on the backside who are uh, really good and uh, sticking to their man, or they're switching, or whatever. They, they communicate extremely well. Um, they got guys who can play one on one defense as well. So. And uh, they get a lot of calls, too. So, I mean, a lot of that goes into the fact. You guys have been resilient all season long. What did the playoffs taught you about your mental toughness, this team's mental toughness? Oh, I mean, we're definitely uh, more mentally tough than, than I thought uh, coming into the playoffs. I mean, the guys that we have, uh, some guys never been in the playoffs before, some guys never been in game sevens before. And uh, to, to show what they have and what we have as a team, uh, it means a lot to be here in the finals.